Hi everyone! In this task, you're going to find prime numbers in an interval of numbers. So now you have an idea of how you can find a prime number. You can check whether a number is a prime number or not. Now this program requires you to, uh, to take two numbers from the user as an interval. It means you're going to have a lower bound and an upper bound and display all the prime numbers within that interval. So go ahead, pause the video, come up with the solution, write it, test it at all points within that interval and after three seconds you're going to see my solution. So how was the challenge? I'm sure you did great. So we are going to go ahead and grab two numbers from the user. Uh, you could call them uh, anything that you want. I'm going to call them the lower limit. I'm going to call it lower bound and the upper limit of that numbers. I'm going to call it upper bound. So I'm going to say int input. Uh, let's say enter uh, the enter first number, first number. And I'm going to copy this and uh, and I'm going to grab this and I'm going to say a second number and this is going to be the upper bound. Now before actually coming up with the logic for uh, checking the prime numbers within this range, uh, I'm going to provide two, um, uh, um, two um, cases. In case the lower bound and the upper bound are the same, I'm going to, I'm going to tell the user that they cannot be cool. If the lower bound is greater than the upper bound, then I'm going to tell the user that the first number is not cannot be more than the or greater than the second number. So uh, first off, you could go about this any way that you want. First, I'm going to complete this logic, and then we are going to uh, check at these numbers on the boundaries. So if lower bound is less than the upper bound. Now I'm just going to pa I'm going to write here pass lf. Now this is our favor this is our favorable condition because lower bound has to has to be smaller than the upper bound. If lower bound equal is equal to the upper bound, I'm just going to tell the I'm show the, to the user the first and second numbers cannot be equal and else which basically says if the lower bound is greater than the upper bound i'm going to say um, the first number cannot be greater than the second one so let's add a dot here and a dot here so that part is done now, what do we want to do within this uh, if lower bound is less than the upper bound? I'm going to write a print statement that is going to uh, grab the prime numbers. So it's going to say the prime numbers uh, between, let's capitalize this one as well. So the prime numbers, I'm going to do a format of string so it's easier to understand. So the prime numbers between the uh, lower bound, lower bound, and and upper bound. So upper bound. Let's say let's go out of it. Let's say R. So these are the prime numbers. What are those? The logic is going to be contained in here. So first off, let's go over how we can iterate uh, uh, starting from lower bound and going to the upper bound because the way that this application works is let's say the lower bound is 1 and the upper bound is 10. We are going to start from 1 and we are going to check whether 1 is a prime number or not. Then we are going to go to 2 and check whether 2 is a prime number or not. Then we are going to get to 3 and check whether 3 is not is a prime number or not. So we are going to implement the same logic for all the numbers starting from the lower bound and ending at the upper bound including the upper bound. That's what we are going to do. We are going to implement the logic from our previous task in here but we are going to repeat it for all the numbers within this limit. 
So I'm going to say for X and range, what is the range? The range is going to start from lower bound and it is going to go to the upper bound. If you remember correctly that the range function, whenever you pass in the second argument, it is going to go up to that point, but not including that. So if lower is one, upper is 10, it is not going to include 10. It is going to go up to nine. So we need to add one here. So it does include that as well. Now, the rest of the logic is going to be the same as we did in our previous task. So I'm going to say if um, x is greater than 1, what do we want to do? We want to check that. So if num, uh, let's uh, now let's iterate over that. So we are going to say for i in range of starting from 2 and going to x, which is that number from the lower bound. I could change this x to num, that just number, which is going to make more sense. Then f uh, number modulo i is equal to zero, it means that it is not a prime number. So when it is not a prime number, we basically break out of this loop. And you can see that it broke out of this if statement, not of, of the loop. I'm going to come one step back and I'm going to say else, and I'm going to print the number. Now, you might be wondering why we are using this else with this for loop. You can use the else statement with uh, for loops as well. Python allows this. The else block uh, after this um, for loop uh, or if you have while loop is executed only if the loop is not terminated by a break statement. That is the condition. Now, these types of uh, logic, they are useful only if there is an if condition present uh, inside the loop, which somehow depends on the loop's variable. You can see that this if statement depends on i, which is this loop's variable. So, if number is greater than one, we are going to loop over those that number. We are going to loop over that number starting from two all the way to that number. So let's say the upper bound is 10. 10 is going to be passed here. So we are going to start from two and go all the way to 10 just to find the factors. Keep this in mind. We do all of this stuff that I've highlighted just to find the factors. And if that number that we have divided by the um, the number, for example, the number is 10, but the loop variable in that case is two. If, if they're perfectly divisible, it means the remainder is zero. That means we have a factor other than the number itself and one. So that disqualifies it from being a prime number. Therefore, we break out of it. As soon as we find two factors, we break out of that loop. Sorry, that if statement. When we break out of it, it means that nothing is going to happen here. And we are going to say else. So this, this is not going to be, this is not going to show anything. We are basically checking. And else is going to just print the numbers which have not been broken out of this if statement. The ones that do not get broken out of this if statement, what, what does actually mean? It means that the numbers that do not actually enter this if statement. So let's say your number is 7. 7 is a prime number. You start from 2 and you check this if statement. But 7, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, so because we start from 2 going all the way to that 7, none of them satisfy this if statement. That's why they're not broken out of this if statement. Therefore, this else statement is going to run. And it is going to print all those numbers. Why all those numbers? Because here is a loop. This loop is going to print all of those. And um, with this, our lo logic comes to an end. Hopefully, it is going to work. So I'm going to pass in uh, enter number 1. I'm going to say 1, and I'm going to say 10. And you can see that it says the prime numbers... Let's add an S here. The prime numbers between 1 and 10 are, we know 2, 3, 5, and 7. Where is 4? We know 4 is not a prime number because 2 times 2 is 4. 6 is not a prime number. Um, 8 is not a prime number. 9 is not a prime number. Now, this is going to give you all the prime numbers in that loop. I could um, uh, run it again, for example, from 1 to 1,000. If you want to find out the prime numbers, these are all um, 
100% sure all the prime numbers that are only divisible by themselves and by one, by not any other number. That's, um, let me take, oh, I need to check it for these two conditions as well. Then I'm going to say that's it. So let's clear this. Uh, let's run this program again. So I'm going to say 10 and I'm going to say 10. The first and second numbers cannot be equal. And I'm going to say 10 and the second num uh, let's enter. And for the second one, I'm just going to pass in five. The first number cannot be greater than the second one. Perfect. That's it for this task. See you in the next one.